So we've had a lot of comments on people wanting to know about jump serving. Riley doesn't think I'm the best jump server. I mean, yeah, he's not. He's not good. Neither is Riley. So we decided to bring in fellow USC Trojan and AVP pro Gina Urango. A lot of you, S. See, let me hear it for Gina, you Rango. So Gina in 2016 was voted the most improved player. And this past year, 2017, she had the most aces on tour. Here you go. Here's jump serving with Gina Urango. So before I even serve the ball, I always have the same routine. And I think routine is really important because it gets you focused for the serve to take a breath and relax before initiating the play. So my routine is I toss the ball between my hands and then I hold the ball up to my face, take a deep breath, relax, and then hold my hand out for the toss. So during your routine, what's going through your head? Obviously you have the routine and then two things I like to ask myself are where and where. And what I mean by that is where am I serving on the back line and then where am I serving an exact location on the other side of the net. So when you talk about where you're serving, are you thinking of a particular player or more of a location on, on the court? I mean obviously you'd want to serve maybe a specific player who's struggling or is in the hard win corner but I like to focus on a certain area of the court, making that player move. And she's got it! Okay, so it kind of like narrows your focus yes. a little bit more. Yeah. So that was her like mindset and routine of how she serves. But now on to the technical side of jump serving. And we had a little bit of debate between if it's a three-step or four-step approach, and we determined it as a Three and a half steps. <laughs> three and a half steps. <laughs> Compromise, right down the middle. So we came to this three and a half step approach because that first step is already out, but you kind of take that step. So that's where this half step comes in. Why do you have that right foot in front versus both feet equal? So to start my serve, yeah. I start with my right arm out with my right leg forward. So same arm, same leg forward. When you're tossing with both feet equal, it's a little off balance, so having that foot in front creates that offset balance that helps create the flow and momentum of the toss and everything. So now since we have the starting position of the serve figured out, it's time to initiate the serve. So this initial first movement that I do, I like to call, will you dance with me? <laughs> so the reason I like to call it, will you dance with me, is because I'm initiating the serve by bringing my wrist down towards my knee. So one of the reasons why we want to take this first step while we're initiating our toss is because the momentum of that transfers into our toss, keeping the ball out in front of us rather than statically standing there and possibly tossing the ball straight up. So the next step of my serve is in synchronization. It's my left foot forward going up while my right hand is tossing the ball. Mm -hmm. It's like that. Kind of like a dance move. Madison, Madison thought it looked like the Charleston, <laughs> which it kind of does. First of all, how do you even know what the Charleston <laughs> dance is? I did. Me I was, and Gina didn't even know what that was. No. I was in a play in my senior year and I had to do the Charleston. That's <laughs> how I knew what it was. <laughs> no joke. Do you want to show us? You can. We can call that step the Charleston if we want to. Yeah, let's call it the Charleston. Yeah. Step one and a half, the Charleston. So our toss is initiated as that second step is coming forward. And now Gina's going to talk about how she tosses and yeah. So my toss, I like to use a lot of wrist rather than arm because it creates that spin on the ball. Because mm -hmm. top spin jump serves, you want to have that top spin on the ball. So creating that wrist flick, mm -hmm. flick of the wrist, mm -hmm. you, you get, you're getting the spin. So then you're creating that good contact point, creating more spin from your hand. Perfect. What would happen if you didn't use any of that wrist? I, I think it, I mean, the toss is, you're not as accurate with the toss. It might go out too forward or right behind you. I just think creating that spin gets that good momentum on the ball and you have a little bit more control with it rather than just kind of lofting it. Everything's more synchronized. Like <laughs> a dance move. 
So when we were filming down at the beach, there was no wind at all. So typically with that, I'll have a, a nice consistent toss. But when there is wind, I like to lower the toss and quicken up my approach and steps. How far do you want to toss the ball into the court? I generally aim for right around the back line so that I'm taking off from my step close right behind it and then kind of landing a couple feet in the court. Mm -hmm. So I'm not necessarily broad jumping super far, but enough to create momentum to get to my defensive position. If you're tossing too far in, you're potentially going to footfall. Okay. So yeah. generally keeping it right on the line or right behind it is a good um, aiming point. The final two steps are a step close, and we could talk about it right now, but we made another video right here that you can go check out, and we talk there in length, hitting approach footwork, and it's the exact same as what Gina does in her serve. Finishing my serve, I focus a lot on hand contact and getting a high hand on the ball. When I think of a high contact point on my serve, I think of finishing my serve with my hand and wrist rather than my shoulder, which can sometimes you know, drop your shoulder, get mm -hmm. a lower contact point, maybe serve the ball in the net. Mm -hmm. So thinking of reaching up and getting, hitting the toss at your highest contact point with a high hand is always kind of like mm -hmm. what goes through my mind. And then when you say like contacting the ball at its highest point, like we've seen, me and him see when you serve, I think when we serve too, is like this, this tilt. I think that tilt is important for two reasons. Number one, you naturally reach higher. The second reason is for me personally, it puts my shoulder in a less stressful position. When it's straight up, it gets a little pinched right in here, kind of tweaking my labrum a little bit. Mm -hmm. But this is a much more comfortable position for my shoulder. And it looks higher. Remember where I started, where I thought of where I want to serve on the court exactly? Mm -hmm. That's pretty much where I'm finishing my hand. Mo mostly kind of like the couple pointer fingers, mm -hmm. uh -huh. finishing it. To so if I'm serving that, that right side sideline, I'm finishing my hand to that right to location. that sideline. Yeah, uh -huh. that I visualized while I was doing my routine. But when I'm warming up for a match, mm -hmm. I get a feel for how I'm serving that day. Like, am I is my serve on? Am I just gonna go for it and just rip serves and go more for speed, or am I feeling a little bit like, okay, I'm not really in as in rhythm as I normally am. Maybe I'm just gonna work more in placement and take a little bit of speed off. Okay. I love that. Yeah. So that's really, I, I like that. The first thing I thought of was like, Madison, you should be thinking about this. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to take that, put it on Madison's refrigerator. Oh, that's great. <laughs> All right. So there you have it. That's jump serving with Gina Urangel. I hope you picked up a few things. I know we did. Learned how to dance. Yeah. Don't forget. <laughs> Will you dance with me? And the Charleston. You can follow Gina on Instagram. I think your name is Urango. Mm -hmm. On Instagram and on Facebook. So I hope you enjoyed it. You know, click the like button if you want. Subscribe. We're coming out with a video every single Wednesday at noon. So uh, we'll talk to you later. No, see you soon. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know.